You're admitting a patient overnight to the medicine teams and they have an acute kidney injury. Not unexpected. You come up with your plan and you think about the reasons for their AKI, but they have a 20 item medication list. What do you do? Today we'll go over the common medications to adjust an acute kidney injury. First we'll talk about the medications we like to hold, and then we'll talk about medications where we more commonly dose adjust. Now remember this won't be a comprehensive list, and there will always be exceptions to what I'm saying today based on particular patient circumstances. When it comes to medications, I like to think of them in groups. In an acute kidney injury, we tend to suspend or hold ACE inhibitors or ARBs because they can affect renal blood flow. We think about also stopping diuretics, in particular potassium sparing diuretics, because a complication of acute kidney injury includes hyperkalemia. And finally, we tend to dose adjust Lasix, and I put it under adjustment because it depends on the etiology of their acute kidney injury, whether we withhold it or actually continue their Lasix. The other medications that we might dose adjust include antihypertensives or beta blockers because they can accumulate, but we also don't want patients going into hypertensive crisis. These are all common medications that I categorize under the cardiac category. Now looking at anticoagulants. With direct oral anticoagulants, the renal clearance can be anywhere from 30 to 80%. And as such, when our GFR is less than 50, we typically have to dose adjust. And when our GFR is less than 15 to 30, there's a relative contraindication. It's important to look at which DOAC you're using and the particular GFR cutoffs. As a general rule, we hold metformin in acute kidney injury because of the risk of lactic acidosis. We also hold most other oral antihyperglycemic medications because there tends to be very little acute benefit in a type 2 diabetic, but accumulation of these medications can result in hypoglycemia as a complication. In contrast, insulin is often required by our patients and cannot be stopped. However, it's also cleared by the kidneys. Because of this, we tend to dose reduce the insulin and monitor the patient's blood sugars carefully in the setting of an AKI. We should also carefully think about medications for pain control. NSAIDs affect renal blood flow and often are a cause of AKI. As a result, we tend to hold that medication. Opioids risk accumulation in acute kidney injury, and these medications we typically hold, but if absolutely necessary, we may dose reduce instead. Medications such as gabapentin or pregabalin can cause withdrawal if held entirely and so we typically dose reduce those. Some other common medications you might see include lithium, which we tend to hold, antibiotics, which in general often require dose reduction, allopurinol, which also requires dose reduction but shouldn't be held entirely due to risk of precipitating gout, and immunosuppressive medications, which we tend to continue overnight and consult for expert opinion in the morning. Now for some helpful tips. In terms of anticoagulation, the best medications to use in an acute kidney injury or chronic kidney disease are tinziparin and heparins. They can be used in even dialysis patients. With decreased renal function, certain oral antihyperglycemics are better options. This includes our GLP-1R agonists, such as liraglutide, or our DPP-4 inhibitors, such as linagliptin. And with respect to pain medications, if opioids are absolutely necessary, we should consider the use of fentanyl or methadone in any renal dysfunction, whether acute or chronic. Both these options have minimal clearance by the kidneys. If neither is a great option for our patient, then hydromorphone would be the next best option in the setting of kidney disease. We hope this list serves as a good starting point for your medication reconciliation as you admit our patients to the medical teaching unit.